now, Brandon Thick Boy Shop. Good morning, kids. It is Monday, October 28th. It is 8.35 a.m. on this glorious, gloomy Monday morning here in SoCal. How's everybody doing? Right, can't hear you, but hopefully it's going well for you as you're driving into work, picking up the kiddos, whatever you're doing right now while you're listening to this. Uh, hopefully you're having a good day, man. Um, fun weekend, fun old weekend, Halloween. It's Halloween week for the kiddos. It is a big deal. If you don't have kids, you know, it's still cool. You go to parties, reason to dress up uh, as a guy, like a caveman, as a girl, as a slut, you know, and you get a free pass. So it's, uh, it's just a fun time all around, fun time all around. For the kiddos, um, let me think. For Halloween, we went to a carnival yesterday uh, at the St. Mel School. It was fantastic. And then Tuesday, we got Knights of the Jack. That's at King Ranch, which is haunted as... Uh, if you watch Ghost Adventures, King Ranch is one of the most haunted places on Earth. But I go there multiple times a year. It's right up the street from the studio. It is super haunted if you believe in that stuff. If you don't, carry on but super haunted um and then thursday yeah halloween man kids got friday off so halloween's always a good time always a good time um I'm trying to think of the costumes bosti is a uh one of those inflatable guys he's obsessed with godzilla he's been i mean forever now even though he's four forever since he's like one he just loves godzilla so he has the big godzilla outfit but the one that has a like a a fan in it so it's blown up but he's too small for the costume so that godzilla looks he has a touch of the downs because he's not he's not big enough so the the eyes droop and the face droops still cool godzilla still there's a special needs godzilla still lit tail still looks good uh tigers him and his boys which i thought took some pride in this because i wish i had this as a kid him and his boys are teenage mutant ninja turtles which one is tiger i think is Raphael. oh nice I think Raphael. This is a lot about your kid who he picks. If he picks Michelangelo, like oh, could be a tough, tough few teenage years. He might be lost if he picks Michelangelo, right? Michelangelo's like the fun pizza eating dumbass, right? But he was my favorite as a kid. I'm a dumbass, so it says a lot about who your kid picks. I told him I was like, "Oh, dude, I'll be a shredder," and then you guys all get around me. He's like, mm, "No." I was like, "All right, that's cool. Let's do my own thing." Uh, then I have the costume I got from Chris D'Elia. You're talking Disney quality, <laughs> Disney quality. Um, who is it? It's what's his name? Uh, the guy from Monsters Inc. He's the lizard. He's a bad guy. Randall. Oh, I'm Randall. I'm Randall. The vi the video I shot with uh, Sure Shot. That's my costume. It's pretty lit. And then baby Billy will be Boo, so I'll hold her as Boo. I think, my, oh, my wife's the Mike Wanowski's wife with all the snake heads. I think Tiger's going to be the big green guy. I'm sorry, big blue guy. And then Bossy's going to be Mike Wanowski. Yeah, that, that's the whole crew. I want to be Henry Waternoos the third, the big fat uh, CEO, but tough to find a costume. I want Joanna to be Roz, the the one with the glasses there. Looks like Lizzo. But yeah, uh, Joanna, Celia, I'm Randall. Tiger's going to be James Sullivan. Billy's going to be Boo. Bossy's going to be Mike Wanowski. Should be a lit Halloween, dude. You guys got any plans for Halloween? Nope. All right, well, that's kind of sad. That's all right. That's, that's a right. kid's day, man. Uh, you know, if you have a family. It's a big deal in L.A. Halloween's a big deal. Oh, I finally watched Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. Whew. Tough. Turn it off halfway through. Hurt my heart. Hurt my heart. Yep. Tim Burton usually doesn't miss. That one was tough. It's just stupid. <laughs> stupid. It's really stupid. Let's get into it, though. Fresh off the plane from the fight companion with the OG crew, Eddie Bravo, uh, Joseph Rogan, and Brian, the kid, Callen, myself, all did watch the big UFC 308 in Austin, Texas, right after Mr. Our President, the 47th President of the United States, Donald Trump, was there. 
Uh, I did drink his Diet Cokes, which made my day. How they didn't give him to autograph one for me, I have no clue. Nobody thought about their boy. That would have made my day. I drank all his Diet Cokes. You'll see I loaded up on them. Usually they never have Diet Cokes, but because uh, Donald J. Trump was there, nobody drinks more DCs than uh, me. But if there's somebody that does, it's Mr. Donald Trump. And uh, he had a bunch left over, so they had them for me finally, and they were Mr. Donald Trump's. It was a glorious time. Glorious time. We, we, we missed some of the fights, talking about uh, politics and just random nonsense, um, black holes, space, uh, technology, AI. The biggest one is we missed the Magomedov, the Pirates, uh, double spinning back fist KO, which is insane. I, you know, he's, um, he's one of my favorite fighters to watch. He's an interesting dude. Um, there's a lot to like about him. His ceiling, I don't know. I don't know. You'd have to see him against a grappler. He obviously has some deficiencies when it comes to grappling, but there is a path where you know he'll get to the top five if they if they like him enough to give him those matchups. But uh, I thought the biggest takeaway, you know, people can get lucky and throw spinning shit and just lands. It's wild shit. But his wasn't a thing of luck. He, there's also a video of him practicing it before, um, during the open workouts and in training. What makes this so calculated is it didn't go spin, spin. It went spin, take a beat, spin. So it was like spin, well thought out, well executed, timing, take a beat, spin. And knocked him out. One of the, I mean, great knockout, ridiculous knockout. So I would imagine he gets a big name next. He called out Izzy. I don't know if that's in the cards for him, but there's some other fun stuff for him. Uh, Murphy looked fantastic against Dan Ige. Stays undefeated. He's going to get a big boy uh, matchup next. Um, people talking about title shot. That's not happening. He, he still has a ways to go. You don't meet Dan Ige and then jump for a title shot. So uh, he, he, he he's going to get in the queue, though. T you know, top eight, top ten. So he's going to be a monster. And Kalaev did any Kalaev things. Impossible to beat. Not the most exciting guy. Not the worst guy to watch, just tough as nails, damn good at everything, not world class at one thing, but damn good in everything, just gets it done, and he should fight for the title next. That's it. Is he going to do blockbuster numbers? No. Does he deserve it? Yes. Um, what I will say, though, if you watch his fight against Rackett, you watch his fight against Yuri, you watch him go, oh, Pierre is not going to be that big of a dog. Like, Pierre can definitely beat him. Like, Ankalaev's not a guy that's just going to go in there like a Hamza, Hamzat or some of these other guys and just grapple. Like, he'll, he'll fancy himself a, a, a fist of cuffs as far as stand-up goes. And, you know, Rackett, great striker, stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. Um, he'll, he'll do it with a number of guys. So the narrative that he's just some – grappler that's going to just take you down like Hamzad or land top you and he's this boring fighter. I, I don't think it's that. I think it's more of um, he, he has uh, he has faith in a stand-up game, especially when it comes to Alex, and he'll stick around long enough. But I, I do think the odds should come down a little bit on him just molly whopping Alex. You, you, don't, you can't watch that racket fight and go, oh, man, and Clive would destroy Pierre now. I don't think so. I think that's definitely the next fight. Um, they're going to have to load it up because even though Pierre is a massive name, they're going to have to load up that card where that's the main event, but the code main event has a big star too in order to get big pay-per-view numbers because the, the fan base for Ank Clive is just not there for whatever reason, but doesn't mean he shouldn't fight for a title. Uh, I think that fight's a lot closer than people think. I think he's definitely beatable, even though no one's ever beat him. He went to a draw, right? But no one's ever figured out how to beat him. But um, I do think Alex possesses the power to turn his lights out. And Magomed's there for, for it. You know, it's not like he's just going to come in and just pure grapple him. He'll, he'll exchange with him. He's hittable. So I think those odds should come down a little bit. I think it should be uh, in Clive's like a minus 125, maybe 175, but the – the you know the minus three hundred minus four hundred is insane. I, I I don't see it. Hamzat Robert Whitaker. That's why I said I would not bet on this fight. There's too many questions. Way too many questions about Hamzat. We don't know. Um, but those questions 
for the naysayers or just for the people who are like, yeah, that's a beast, but it's okay to have questions. It wasn't answered because he beat him in three minutes and 34 seconds. This is a good thing. You're not going to get all answers questioned about your favorite fighter or a contender in one fight. It's very tough to do. It's tough to do. It's going to take a couple fights before those questions get answered. And in this one, if you're a Hamzat fan, this is a good thing. Yeah, he molly whopped Robert Whitaker. molly whopped. Didn't get touched. Beat him so bad, he broke his jaw. Now, I think Robert Whitaker's had issues before, and he's on record saying this. He had issues with his jaw with the DDP fight. And he goes, yeah, it's my Achilles heel. I've had issues with it before. Um, and, you know, it just it happened. I don't know if he came in with an issue. His teeth look terrible. It's like a fish. You know, it's just not good. Um, but, yeah, Hamzat's that guy. So the the mythical narrative on Hamzat continues. Is there some unanswered questions? Absolutely. What would happen if Robert Worker got out of that round? What happens if he was able to defend some takedowns? What happened if he won the second round, third round? Um, but what did get answered? Hamzat's a bad motherfucker. He is who he thought he is. The whole fraud check thing, as the kids say, yep. No fraud check there. Passed all the tests. Let's take a little break. Drive fast, all gas. The launch is this Friday. Dark horse over 800 freaking horsepower. Has GTD carbon fiber from Anderson Composites. Hood, fenders, GTD wheels, upgrade tires. Over 800 freaking horsepower. This is your chance to win. Be like our friend Will, who won the Raptor R Killer. It's this Friday. We are live. It's the official SEMA build for Roush. I'll be at SEMA next week. Come say hi. Come check out the Mustang. But you're eligible to win it this Friday. All you got to do is buy a T-shirt, and you could be like Will and win a dope-ass Mustang Dark Horse 2024. Good luck. DriveFastAllGas.com. This episode of The Shop Show is brought to you by Buy Optimizers. Do you know if you're getting enough magnesium? Do you? Because I don't. Because four out of five Americans aren't. Did you know that? The longer it takes me to fall asleep at night, the more stressed out you get. You get exhausted the next day. Or you just you got anxiety at night. You don't need all that, man. Ever since I started adding magnesium breakthrough to my nightly routine, I've been able to shut down my mind a little bit and get the best sleep ever, ever. So if you're ready to get a good night of sleep, quit with all the stress, anxiety. Magnesium can help you. So don't miss out on the most relaxing sleep ever with magnesium breakthrough. Here's an offer for you guys. Go to bioptimizers.com slash shop. That's B-I-O-P-T-I-M-I-Z-E-R. All lowercase. What? All lowercase. All lowercase. Bioptimizers.com slash shop. Use the promo code shop at checkout to save 10%. If you subscribe, not only will you get amazing discounts, free gifts, you will make sure your monthly supply is guaranteed. For for him, I think what the, the one thing we can check off of is... You're going to have to be so damn prepared and so damn prepared to go into deep waters to beat Hamzat. You better be ready to go because that first round, what he did to Robert Whitaker is absolutely insane. Now you can say, oh, it's an older Robert Whitaker. It's not that, dude, he's coming off a few wins. Starching dudes. Starching dudes. And Hamzat, you know, he doesn't have a lot of credible. Wins at middleweight, this one checks that box. For me, that was the question. He really hasn't beat uh, a a true middleweight. Kamaru Usman doesn't count, right? Doesn't count. Um, Kevin Holland, that that was at a catchweight at 180. Okay, doesn't count as true middleweight win. Gilbert Burns, no. Um, You know, there's just a lot of questions that go into it. Gerald Mershots is, is... Best one at middleweight, and he knocked him out in 17 seconds. So going to this, you're like, I don't know, man. He struggled against Kamaru Usman. Well, let's give Kamaru a little bit of credit here. He was one of the greatest to ever do it. His takedown defense is pretty damn good. Also, the version of Hamzat we're getting now is a Hamzat that's focused, isn't bounce around camps, has kind of figured some personal stuff out in his life. Also, he was going through horrible issues with his son, who's had... I think he's going to go on his third surgery. He's jumping around all over the place, different countries, had to leave a camp. So 
add all that into it, and Kamaru Usman's pretty fucking good. I think we can say, okay, there's there's a lot of good things about Hamzat. He is that boogeyman we thought he was. To do that to Whitaker is insane, dude. Absolutely insane. Hamzat's damn good. Now, what's next for him? Um, I thought the UFC might have him jump the queue because they do want him to be champ. I think, and we'll get to that, but... I, they, they've been trying to have him champ for a while now, but it, things got slowed down. He had the longest COVID ever. He had his personal issues, his issues with the dictator from Chechnya, right? There's all that stuff that goes into it that has slowed his train down. But then you mollywop Robert Whitaker, who's number three in the world, coming off all these wins, and you do it in impressive fashion. I thought maybe they'd catapult him to the top and jump the queue over Strickland. But hold your horses. I don't I don't think so. I think the right thing to do is still Strickland versus DDP. Cause in my opinion, and a lot of other credible people in the space, I, I think Strickland won that fight. I do I think there's argument there where Strickland won that fight. So you you kind of gotta do that again. You gotta do that one again, see how it goes. If DDP beats him convincingly a second time, it's similar to Max Volkanovsky, right? Where the first two, like, God, I thought Max won that. People think, I don't know. Third one, super convincing. All right, we're good. All right, that's over. Now we know Volkanovski beat him. Let's carry on. With DDP, in order to really be a champ, you, you kind of got to put the, the cap on it. You kind of got to put the stamp on it. You got to get past Strickland, who is a former champ. You won the belt from him. A lot of people don't agree with it as judges. So I, I do think you got to do Strickland. Not to mention... There's a lot going on behind the scenes with Hamza that a lot of people don't know about. So one thing you got to take in consideration, you know, he's not very active these days for a variety of reasons, you know, health. And he says he can't travel because of his health. And he's kind of been a little bit um, inconsistent when it comes to weigh-ins. This last weigh-in, he weighed in last. Some people say he weighed in an hour late. So if you're the UFC, do you want that as your champ? And with that, if you might say, ah, he's figured out, he he found his roots, um, you know, his family stuff's all figured out, his camp's figured out, we don't have to worry about that, he's going to make weight. Okay, good argument. That's fine, I can ride with that. But then if you go even deeper, that Chechen dictator, his two sons were his cornermen. Did you know that? No. Yes. So then it's like, Okay, how close is he with this dictator? Uh, his two sons, who I don't know their background in mixed martial arts at a world class level, it, it, that 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 makes it a little, it makes the waters a little murky. So, I know the UFC has you know their hands. So all he so he has one fight. Um, yeah, so. One of his sons, um, one has no background. The other, Ali won his first professional MMA fight with uh, Chemaev in his corner. However, some fans claim the fight was fixed because it took place on promotion owned by his dad. Oh, my God. And those are your corner men. So if I'm the UFC, share me out. If, if I'm the UFC, do you want that to be the face of the middleweight division, one of the faces of the UFC, knowing that, there's these ties to this horrible dictator, and not just ties. Not like, well, no, they hang out after his wins, and he throws parties for him, gives him land. No, no, no. He's he's in the he's in the fam. His sons, who don't have any background in fighting, are cornering arguably the best middleweight in the world. So there's clearly some influence there. Clearly, he can't come to the states because his because of his close ties to this dictator that's an issue so so you might say well if trump wins the election he's going to be loosey-goosey him and dana are close we can get him into the country okay we're going to bank on that the future of the middleweight division and then not only that if you're ddp and strickland whoever wins that fight which they're probably going to do next whoever wins that fight you're going to ask that champ to only fight in the Middle East? Well, that ain't fair. 
Yeah, but they're going to throw in bags of money. I get it, but that's not fair. You got to come to the champ. The champ shouldn't have to make all these sacrifices to get to you because your relationship with this horrible dictator. That's insane, dude. UFC knows all this. I'm not saying anything the UFC doesn't know. So that's what's going on here. So there's a lot of shit we're going to have to get through and figure out before Hamza's your champ. And it, what's crazy, it has nothing to do with his fighting ability. We know, he's, we know he has the skill to be a world champion. We know he checks all those boxes. But do you really want to get in the business where this dictator, we don't know how influential he is in his career and his life, but you got to assume it's pretty heavy if his two sons who have no background in fighting or corner him against the number three middleweight in the world, Robert Whitaker. Something's going on there, kids. So the, the, the main concern is if he becomes your champ, is he can only fight in the Middle East. Now, he came out and said, I think the Brett Okamoto or one of the guys out there during this UFC 308 buildup in the, the pre-fight interviews, he goes, I don't like to travel. I get sick when I travel. Okay. Well, that doesn't work. Because part of the gig is you got to travel to wherever the fuck we tell you. But is he such a draw? Is he such a big deal? The UFC, which notoriously is known, unless you're Conor McGregor, which he is not, has never bent the knee for anybody. They don't do any of that ever. Are they going to do it for Hamzat? Now, it's not like bending the knee to a guy like Conor McGregor, who's your biggest draw of all time. That I can understand because it's good for business. This would actually hurt business. Unless Riyadh and you know his excellency is putting up all this money where the UFC's like, all right, I, I guess we'll bend the knee because we're gonna make they're gonna pay us so much money that he's gonna be the face of the the UFC, which is wild. For the UFC to bend their knee, this guy who can't fight in the United States, your biggest market, especially pay per view, by far your biggest market, not even remotely close. The amount of money they would have to put up for the UFC to bend the knee. For him to be the face of your division, it's pretty mind-blowing. So there's a lot going on there. And that's why you're not going to get Hamzat versus DDP next. Because they have to figure out what's best for the business, for the UFC, before they give Hamzat the keys to the UFC. There's a lot there. It's heavy. It goes deeper than my dumbass explained to you guys. And it's dark, shady shit, political shit, horrible dictator shit. But all you should know is Hamzat had his two sons in his corner that have no mixed martial arts experience. And as a fighter, that is mind-blowing. So I did look it up on my phone. Um, I didn't see that they were in the corner for this fight, but they were both in the corner for UFC 294, I think. But I, I don't know for a fact if they were there for this fight. Pretty sure they were. Yeah, that's the only that's the only thing that pops up usually. Mm -hmm. Either way, but they've been in as close ties. Yeah. That's the point. Let's take a little break, then we can jump right back into UFC 308. The NBA is finally back. It's also the World Series of the freaking Dodgers Yankees, dude. Go Dodgers. But the NBA is finally back. New season means new ways to get into the action with my friends at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner, the NBA. Who's draining threes from beyond the arc? Who's crashing the boards, grabbing rebounds? Get behind your favorite players and the prop bets you can make on DraftKings, the home of the NBA player props. First time? Cool. New DraftKings customers? Bet five to get 200 bonus bets instantly. Every point counts with DraftKings Sportsbook. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now. Use the code SHOBSHOW. That's code SHOBSHOW. For new customers, you get 200 bonus bets when you bet just five buckaroos. Only on DraftKings. The crown is yours.
Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope and y 467 369 In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, 21 and over, age and eligibility varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. For additional terms and responsible gaming resources, see dkng.co slash bball. This episode of the Shop Show is brought to you by OO O'Reilly Auto Parts. They're in the business of keeping your car on the road. O'Reilly Auto Parts offers friendly, helpful service parts knowledge you need for all your maintenance and repairs. They've got thousands of parts and accessories in stock either in store or online, so you don't have to worry if you're in a jam. All right, the team at O'Reilly Auto Parts can do all sorts of stuff to help you out. So whether you're a car expert or a rookie, you'll find the employees at O'Reilly Auto Parts are knowledgeable, helpful, best of all, super friendly. Stop by O'Reilly Auto Parts today. Visit them at O'ReillyAuto.com slash shop. That's O'ReillyAuto.com slash shop. So U- UFC has, you know, they got to tread lightly with this. It, it's, 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 it's kind of awkward. It's crazy awkward. that they don't, A lot of the fighters... <laughs> From that area can only fight in that area is kind of like wow dude it, and the, the reason you're gonna do it is because they have so much money they're gonna go we we oh, okay so you can't come to america we're gonna pay you so much money because you're gonna miss out on that we're gonna pay you so much money invest so much in your business we're well at least make sure you don't lose money for our guys to be champion now you're forgetting one thing the rest of the division especially strickland ain't gonna be quiet about it so, or, or, you know, I don't know. Or they go to Strickland, like, be cool. We're going to pay this much to fight him in his neck of the woods. And money talks. It's prize fighting. What would you do? What would you do? Let's say Strickland beats DDP. And he calls out Hamzat and all this shit. And they go, yep, we're going to give you a Hamzat fight. But it's in Abu Dhabi. Strickland's go, what? Mm. That dude in fucking T-Mobile. We can't. He can't come here. But if you want to fight him, well, no, I don't give a fuck. Give me the next guy. Mm-mm. You have to go there. How many guys are going to bend the knee? It's going to get interesting. Money talks. Some guys are going to have to sell their souls a little bit in order for this whole Hamzat movement to happen. There's a lot of moving pieces that have to happen for him to be champ. Not only does the UFC have to bend the knee, but the entire division does. Because if he's your champ, he can't find America. That means you have to bend the knee financially and fly your ass to Abu Dhabi for a chance to win that title. It's interesting. And I'm all for it. Get your popcorn, kids. We'll get it figured out in the next few months. But there's no way. There's, there's too much red tape to cut through for him to fight DDP next. I'm so curious how Strickland and DDP and the rest of the division – what they're going to say about it is everyone just going to go along with it are we all just going to pretend this isn't happening we're just going to pretend Hamza out this boogeyman that this isn't going on and we're all just like yeah i'm fighting abu dhabi it's no different no it's different no it's different tell us why you have to fight him there uh apparently he gets sick when he travels well then you shouldn't fight that's part of the fucking gig that's that's the gig bud you got to go into. You got to take it from the champ, and the two champs aren't from Abu Dhabi. The two champs aren't Muslim. The two champs aren't from the Middle East. You got Strickland, who's American. American is fucked, dude, and it's pretty loud about it. There's no way you're gonna put a muzzle on Strickland. It's gonna get so interesting. I can't wait. Get your popcorn. I hope Strickland doesn't bend the knee. Then DDP, your current champ, is South African. If anything, Hamza should have to go to South Africa or Australia, wherever you guys want to do it. But to make these guys go to the Middle East is insane because his relationship with a dictator, that's what we're doing? Oh, uh, yeah, but Hamza, he, he, he gets sick if he gets on a plane. I don't give a fuck. I'm the champ. Let's see what these guys do. I can't wait, dude. It's insane. I can't believe we're talking about this. I'm probably going to the Middle East, am I? Can't pay me enough, dude. 
They're going to play this and like, we'll kill him. But I'm out here, baby. I I'm I'm ain't going out there. <laughs> I need the fuck out of here, dude. Not a chance. We'll all pretend that this isn't going on. Why is it Holmes not active? That's why. They're banking on Trump being elected. So he, him and Dana are super close. So he'll give him a, a free pass. But even then, it gets dicey, dude. Even if Trump wins, that gets dicey. He'll win. But even if he does, he will. But if he does, even that gets dicey, dude. These are weird games we're playing right now. You want to get involved with the Riyadh season? Gets awkward. I think I. And, but I, you know what's crazy? His ties to that dictator, this kind of confusing situation, it just builds this fucking boogeyman thing. Because a fighter is gonna go. I'll fight him wherever. That's the baddest dude. I don't give a fuck. I'll go to. I'll beat his ass in Abu Dhabi, in Vegas, in Australia. The fighter's gonna do that. What person is gonna go? Uh, real quick. So we can only fight him in the Middle East. It's never been done before. It's hilarious. You guys are gonna do it. You can do it. Money talks. You guys want to get involved with this shit? Blood money that comes with the territory. Some shady characters, dude. Shady characters. Ah, you can't catch my ass in the Middle East after this rant. Fuck no, dude. America. <laughs> Hilarious. Hamza, I checked the box, though. Yeah, are there questions unanswered? Sure. Boy, did he check some big boys, though. How's he do against world-class competition? He smokes them. Smokes them. Didn't get touched. Ragdolled Robert Whitaker. What? And if Hamzat wasn't this talented, this isn't even a conversation. UFC's going, get the fuck out of here. Who's in his corner? No, get the guy out of here. Talent talks. And that's how talented he is. They're willing to entertain this. <laughs> it's hilarious, dude. What a mess. Oh, you'll figure it out. I just hope those guys don't bend the knee and they're loud about it. Get your popcorn, kids. Let's move on to Ilya Taporia, Max Holloway. Oh, boy. That was tough. Uh, I posted this meme of Stewie from Family Guy crying. Uh, when Robert Whitaker and Holloway lose, it's not that, like, I, I like the change of guard, right? This was a big change of the guard. It's Hamzat's time. It's Ilya Taporia's time. It is what it is. This is the This is the sport. This is the sport. Some of the young lines pass the test, some don't. And then those, those, those staples in the UFC carry on. They get a few, like one or two more wins, and then eventually they catch up to them. But the, uh, the young lines pass the test, and they're the, they're the next wave. This was the changing of the guard. Uh, Robert Whitaker's run is over. It's not sad. He had a phenomenal Hall of Famer, bona fide first bout Hall of Famer. You know, his jaw's all fucked up. Uh, this was his best chance to get back to a title shot. Now he goes back in the queue. He'll have some big fights. For Max Holloway, too. We thought he was done. Remember, he thought he was done after Volkanovski. He, you know, got his shit together, beat Korean Zombie, and then, is in, and then beat Calvin Cater, right? Or Arnold Allen. Beat Arnold Allen, a young line. Um, and then, you know, he had his... Big boy knockout, probably the best knockout uh, in a long fucking time against Justin Gaethje. Um, and they, you know, the, the, so here's the thing too that you guys should be privy to. So whenever a guy w wins a BMF title, so BMF is never going to a young line. A BMF is no, never going to contender. Notice BMF always goes to a guy who's older in the tooth he has a reputation for being a badass. He has a reputation for staying in the pocket, delivering great fights, right? A BMF is never going to, like, you never do a BMF with Patty Pimlet. You're never going to do a BMF with some young kid. It doesn't make sense. What? No, they have to have a history, which BFM basically means badass motherfucker who's older. <laughs> badass motherfucker who's a veteran. So notice, anytime anybody wins the BMF, and it's just, you know, it considered a belt, right? Quote, unquote, a belt. It's basically saying this older, longer experienced fighter, this is our way of giving them a belt. 
because they didn't do it, or maybe they did it previously, but they're, they're longer in the tooth. But it, it gives them all this, all this attention, and then they usually fight in a big, big fight after that. But they jump the queue. So they, so they fight for a BMF, they win that, they get a belt, and then they get a huge fight next. But in previous experience, take away the BMF, these older guys, these veterans, I'm not saying they don't deserve it, but in previous UFC business, they wouldn't give these guys title shots. So notice, whoever wins the BMF, they usually lose their next fight because they're jumping the queue because they gave them this kind of fake title of BMF. They give them a belt, and then they're fighting the actual fucking champion, and they all lose because they probably shouldn't be there. Right? Like most guys, you're not going to knock out Justin Gaethje and then fight Ilya Tapor. I mean, that's a huge gap. Huge. This young, in his prime contender, Justin Gaethje, a little over the hill. But why are they fighting for the BMF? Because they've earned it. They're badasses. They've, all, they've had their wards. That's how you fight for the BMF. But then the attention you get from the BMF, they go, okay, well, here's the real champ. And they get fucked up. That's how this goes. So always be wary. When you see BMF, it means two older guys who have a ton of fucking fights, who are our fan, their fan favorites, and then they get thrown to the fucking real contenders, the real champs, and they get fucked up. Always be wary of BMF. Go through BMFs. Go ahead. Go, look at their next fights. It never goes well. BMF means you're older. This is a way for us to give you a belt, and then you get all this attention, and then we toss you to the real champ, and you get fucked up. What's this? I was just Jorge Mazidon because he was like yeah. the first one, right? Yeah, yeah. Jorge won the first one, and then he fought Kamara Usman. So he beat Nate for the BMF title, Mollywop Nate, right? Some 10 8 rounds there. And then they give him the champ, and he gets kind of manhandled, and then loses, goes on to lose four. Go to the next BMF. Who won after that? Whoever won after that? Yeah, who, who, who's, the, who's the next BMF title? Well, Max won, right? Uh, how many BMFs have, have there been? Let me look that up real quick. So Max won off Justin Gaethje. Now, think about it. Nate Diaz, Jorge Masvidal, both that. They've had wars. So Nate Jorge is the first one. Yeah. Dustin Poirier, Justin Gaethje. That was for BMF? That's what it says. Both older vets, right? Mm-hmm. Then Justin Max Holloway, yeah. older vets. They all lose their next fights. Because you go from BMF where you're fighting another a lot of miles vet who's a star, and they're going, oh, look, they got all this attention. Give them the title shot, and they get fucked up. Now, I would do the same thing. You, get, you, you win that BMF, dude, this is my chance at a title, and you, you're going to take it. But if, if you, if you want to make sure you stay on the winning path, you probably keep calling out. You probably keep defending the BMF. Just keep doing big fights, dude. You know, it's still a belt. Keep doing the big fights against older vets. This is an interesting one. So he lost the BMF, but then he won against uh, Benoit St. Denis. So that's like completely opposite. Yes. But then, of course, Islam after that and then lost. But notice. Yep. 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 Yeah. Once like the head top, top tier fighters. Top tier guy. Yeah. Yeah. Because you get, you go from BMF and then you get this nitrous boost to fight the top guy and it's usually tough because you, again you're usually the bmf means older veteran title who's had wars and they get catapulted in its trouble yeah um so so for max he's interesting because i see i didn't like when they announced him at 45 i think the days of 45 are over i he looked good in this fight too so I just think this shows you how fucking good Topori is. It's not like they, you looked at Max like, oh, no, the weight cut. It finally caught up to him. No, Max looked pretty fucking good. I gave Max one of the rounds. I thought it was 1-1 going to the third, and then it got dicey. So it's not like he beat this old 
weathered Max. I think Max has a lot of, I shouldn't say a lot. I think Max has a few big fights at 55 left. I would do Conor McGregor. I've always said that for BMF. Conor's older, a lot of miles. Here's a belt. We can market that. Max Holloway, Conor, they fought, they have the history there. Mm -hmm. That's a massive fight. Max's name has never been bigger. Why not? That's what I would do. So I, I think 55 is where Max should be. I didn't like this at 45, but he, I thought he looked great at 45. I think Topuria beat a damn good Max Holloway at 45. I don't think it's a case of ah, Max is older, he didn't look good. No, Topuria is that fucking good. Now, what I don't like right now is the narrative on Topuria is like, he'll go to 55 and fight Makachev. No, what? what? He just won the belt. What is going on here? Why are guys, I get it money-wise in big fights, but there seems to be this thing where everyone wants to be a double champ. You only jump divisions when you've cleared out your division and there's nobody else. For example, Izzy. He, people, y'all must have forgot. Izzy lapped the competition. There was nothing for him. They had to sign a guy from fucking glory kickboxing who beat him and catapult him up the ranks in order to create some narrative on Izzy that this guy can beat him because he lapped the competition. He lapped everybody. He cleared out the division. Then he decided to take, try his hand at 205. Didn't work out, but that's when you do it. John Jones dominated the division. There's nobody else for him. Then you go to heavyweight. The, these guys now, to period, just the fuck you talking about? You have so many contenders at 45. What are you talking about? You're fighting Makachev? What? This guy in Diego Lopez. You have Volkanovsky there. You have uh, uh, Mosarv. You got Aljo. There, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of meat there. You have Murphy. There, there's a lot of shit you got to do there, man. Yair Rodriguez. Ivalov, Arnold Allen can go on a run. You got Sterling's new in there. You got Murphy at 12. There's a lot go. There's a lot there. Now you, you win three or four of those, and Makachev keeps doing his thing. All right, now you go. But to win the title off Volkanovsky, who basically should have never been in there, and then you beat Max Holloway, who's fighting at 55. There's still some unanswered shit there. For him to knock them out is insane, and all kudos to him, but you got some work to do at 45, bud, before you start barking at 55. And for Makachev, he makes a little more sense if he wants to go up and fight Shavkat if he were to beat Bilal Muhammad. That's a big if. But Mach Makachev fighting at 70 makes more sense. You're not going to see Topiri fight Makachev for a long, long time, nor should you. He has so much work to do. I, I don't like that. I don't like that. You just won the title? You've had title under a year and you're just going to jump ship to another division? Since when do we do that? It's because money. That's why. But no, you, you got to stay and, and do your part, my man. That's what you got to do. And he can do it. I, I would favor him over all those names I mentioned. But you got to do it. You got to do it like Izzy did. You got to do it like John Jones did. That's when you do it. The talk of him and Connor, I get it. You know, me and Casey love Connor. I, I, yeah, sure. Connor ain't fighting at 45. 180 right now. So would it be the biggest fight to make? Sure. Does it make sense? Absolutely not. But I watch it, yes. Does it make sense? Connor Max is the fight. Connor doesn't need to fight this young fucking lion in his prime at 45. He, him fighting, and I'm sure Max, they could do a catch weight at 65 or BMF. I bet Connor would fight Max Holloway at 65 because Max, Max can kind of do no wrong. Max is beloved. Max 55, sure. Max at a catch weight at 65 against Connor, take my fucking money. BMF title, do it. That's what they should do. Is, is the BMF not like a linear title? Like, can they just pick pluck it because is Ilya not the BMF now? No. Uh, it doesn't get transferred. It doesn't get transferred. Yeah. Yeah, you can. That's just, fine. I'm you, okay with it. It's yeah, a weird title. It, Do whatever you want. Yeah, the title. It's a made up title, and the title is is dependent on the person, not the weight. Yeah. Yeah. So it's all good. Do a 65. He's still the BMF. You're still a BMF if you want it once. You're a BMF. 
go ahead and Connor, Max, BMF, the casuals don't bail. You know, they don't fucking know. That, that would sell. Makes sense. That's the fight. Connor, Max Holloway, BMF, wherever you want to do it, the thing's going to sell. I think 165 is perfect because that's the one. They're not changing an actual weight class. It's a catch weight, and they everyone wants to see 165 it's weight It's not class. like Connor's going to go on to on a five-fight win streak. No, they're, they're both. There's only a few left. This makes sense. Makes all the money in the world. Great fight. Both guys, everyone loves them. Okay. Let's take a little break and jump right back into UFC 308. When you think about business that are selling through the roof, like all birds or skim, sure, you think about a great product or a cool brand, brilliant marketing, but what's often overlooked is the secret is actually the business behind the business, all right? Uh, and for millions of businesses, that, that business is Shopify, like Drive Fast All Gas, launches this Friday, November 1st, when a dark horse Mustang with over 800 horsepower, Roush powered, carbon fiber all over that freaking thing. But all the merch you see, all that at drivefastallgas.com is brought to you by Shopify. You know why? Because nobody does selling better than Shopify. Home of the number one checkout on the planet. So if you're into growing business, your commerce platform better be ready to sell whatever your customers are scrolling or strolling. On the web, in your store, in their feed, and everywhere in between. Businesses that sell more, sell with Shopify. Upgrade your business and get the same checkout. All right, as drive fast, all gas, that's what we use. Sign up for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash shop, all lowercase, S-C-H-A-B, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash shop, all lowercase, and upgrade your selling today. Shopify.com slash shop, all lowercase. Cha-ching. So there you have it, UFC 308. Uh, and just in regards to uh, Whitaker, so his injury with his, he, was, I, he did this interview, and he's saying, I find this interesting, so his teeth have been a problem since he was a child. He's like, it's my Achilles heel in my teeth. He goes, it's not a, the jaw. The teeth are loose. For, I guess these three bottom teeth since he was a kid are always loose. And so in DDP, his teeth got pushed back too. So it's just a problem he's always suffered from. Mm. And then with Hamzat, he said it was he didn't have time to like maneuver anything. Like He put so much pressure, the teeth moved back even further, and that's where the pain came from. So he's like, it's Achilles heel. I've always dealt with it. Which is strange. I wonder why they're loose. Was he born with just genetics, probably? But um, so this doctor actually came out and said, the rep- the re- you know how do we- he's going to repair it is by they cut like two slices, yeah, right, open up your lip and all, and then they put plates in there. So if he has plates in there, it could solve the problem. It can't be good. No, that, dude, that's that should be the most pa- so one of the most be a painful fighter, things huh? ever. You look at that picture, like oh my god, dude, that is- and they're, it's not like they're pushed back a little. It's like yeah, they're. It's called floating, apparently. Yeah. Shout out to Whitaker, though. One of the best to ever do it. What do you got, Jim? Definitely. Um, so any guesstimate on the pay-per-view, number, pay-per-view numbers in the U.S. only, though, domestically, for, US, for you, PFL? 2,000. <laughs> Not too far off. Uh, Dave Meltzer reported it was like it did just over 10,000 buys on ESPN+. Plus. Dude, and how delusional is that owner of the PFL? One of the biggest ever. We beat UFC number. Oh, excuse me. He put this. So Don Davis. And Matt, this, look. Put rear, this. <laughs> go up. Yeah. So Don Davis, but rear and sports excellent of global scale. We did it with PFL Super Fight Battle of the Giants. Massive worldwide audience metrics. Thanks, PFL fans. And look at the metrics. It's just like really reaching. Countries, 160 impressions, 4.4 billion. Posts, video views, three hundred twenty-six million. That's across the world of every account. Post three hundred ninety-one replies, five hundred ninety-two k. Quotes one hundred forty-three thousand. Engagement thirty-four million. Media stories one point five k. Pay-per-view buys ten thousand. We lost our ass. Yeah, PFL. They'll be out of business in three years. Nah. Hopefully not, but we'll see. Uh, so. Rico Verhoeven, who's a very, very famous kickboxer, he's actually asking Francis Gano to do a crossover fight. He said it would be kickboxing, MMA, but what he wants is boxing since they both are not, you know, boxers, really. Even though they, he does kickboxing, but you know what I'm saying, right? This should be MMA. Hey, stop all this. Stop, stop all this bullshit. No, no, he's an MMA fighter. Come get some. If you want to fight Francis, it's MMA only. 
We're not doing all these weird rules. All right, we only got 10,000 fucking pay-per-view buys doing MMA. You think that's going to go up if you confuse everybody? You're a kickboxer, but we're not going to kickbox. But we're, there's no take that. Get the fuck out of here. Francis doesn't need to do that. This is the problem with Simon PFL. This is the problem when guys leave and they talk all this shit. This is the problem. What now? Now uh, he'll fight Rico Van Hooven, but it's in kickbox. There's nobody. There's nothing. Now imagine if Francis, thank God, God bless him, would imagine if he didn't get those huge boxing fights. Now most guys can't, and that's why he left. He knows what he's doing. He made more money than God fighting Fury and Anthony Joshua. But imagine if you're not if you're not Francis, you go over to the PFL. Okay. It's a waste of time. We have nobody for you, Francis. Nothing. Oh, and that huge card that we said was better than the sphere and all this other UFC shit, you 10,000 pay-per-view buys. That's atrocious. That's the business you're fighting for. Also, that's the best they can ever do. It will never be, we have nobody else for you, dude. Unless someone from the, unless Stipe retires and you throw the bag at him in PFL, which you've already fought him, you got to pray to God that UFC releases fighters, or you got to pray to God that one championship will co-promote with you, because PFL on its own is a sinking ship, dude. They have nothing. And the, the captain of that ship is batshit crazy. Can't shut up about the UFC. We're Pepsi, they're Coca-Cola. What the? But you're Sierra Mist. It's not even close, dude. It, it sucks, it's, but Francis won either way. This isn't a Francis problem. This isn't a Francis problem. He's, he's, he made it. He made the right choice, fought two major names in boxing, made more money than God. Okay. He can ride for the sunset now. What, Rico? And he went kickboxing, but no, what? No, I'm out. <laughs> he was saying like you, he would do it all of them, but he, he thinks boxing would be the best. because what? You know. what are you talking about? <laughs> uh, what? No, MMA fighter. Yeah, I know, but we, we could do that, but you can only shoot with a minute 30. Get the fuck out of it. No, that's not happening. What else you got? Do you have any real contenders? The answer is no. The answer is absolutely not. We have nothing for you. Fair enough. Uh, did you see uh, Dana White complaining about the rankings lately? He always complains about them, yeah. Especially most recently because of uh, Alex P- Pereira versus uh, Khalil Roundtree. How Khalil did really well. And then he was upset that Khalil didn't go up in the rankings, even mm. though he lost because yeah. he did really well against uh, yeah, that's weird. Alex. Yeah, that's strange. Anyway, so now he says he's teaming up with he, – he's asked Mark Zuckerberg for help with some, <laughs> some sort of system for the rankings. That's not good. Zuckerberg, crooked ass. Mackenzie Dern, like, why is Mackenzie Dern number one pound for pound <laughs> all the time? Mikey Musumeshi. Why is Kamala Harris in the pound for pound rankings? They're just paying the money there, too. All right. Um, this is pretty cool. It's not official, but Jack Della Maddalena says that uh, he's going to be fighting Kamaru Usman. That's a good fight. It's a tough fight for Kamaru. That's a good fight, though. Big step up, too, but uh, not confirmed. It's a great fight. Let's take a little break before we send this episode down home. Because this episode is brought to you by Sure Shot, also formerly known as Safety Shot. We changed the name, changed the brand, and same lit product. The world's first alcoholic detoxifier that reduces blood alcohol content as little as 30 minutes. So this Halloween, while you're dressed like Scooby-Doo, you're dressed like Frankenstein, nothing's worse when you have this ridiculous costume on, you get all hammered. Nobody likes that guy. That's where Sure Shot can help you out. Get a four-pack for you and the homies before you go out to your Halloween party. You're going to have some fun. You want to wake up the next morning not feeling like a zombie. You want a sharper mind and body, liver support, well-being boost, gut support, hydration. That's where SureShot got you covered, man. All right, just go to SureShot.com. Use the promo code Brendan. You get 10% off or your local BevMo. Pick up a four-pack or a bunch of packs for this Halloween this Thursday. So have a drink on me this Halloween. Enjoy yourself. Wake up feeling refreshed. All right, we got you. SureShot.com, promo code Brendan. Happy Halloween. This I thought was interesting. This was, I'm not sure which press press conference. Oh, yeah. So there's three, three eight press conference. Um, you say you're not sure which press conference? Because, you know, Dano does contender series, does power slap, does 
all the stuff. So, but it's at the UFC 308 press yeah. conference. Yeah, so this guy, this is an undefeated fighter, and he was asking Dana White if he can, you know, seven get a chance. Or eight, no. yeah. Seven or no, yeah. It was cool, and Dana gave him a shot, right? But he has to fight on some smaller promotion. If he wins that, then he gets to come in. Korean Zombies promotion. That's cool. Yeah, so I, Zombie has a new, it's called Z Fight Night or something like that. Zombie Fight Night. And then, uh, so he, if he wins that fight in Korean Zombies promotion, Dana will sign him to the UFC. That's sweet. Yeah. And uh, did you know Paige Van Zandt had her second power slap event? Oh, no. There was a power slap with, with uh, same week, right? In Abu Dhabi. That was the big one. Oh, I'm not sure where it was at. No, it was Abu Dhabi. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Power slap nine in Abu Dhabi. Damn, do you see none of this? Yeah, so they... I didn't know it was in Abu Dhabi. Yeah, because okay. they were like doing it in cahoots with the big 308. Mm -hmm. So they were there the few days prior. They flew all the big boys out there for that. So Paige competed in this. And then she went to <laughs> a slap draw. So no one won. Because no one got knocked out? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how power slap works. I don't like watching it, so... Yeah. But yeah. But uh, so now she's she wants to come back for a third one. She's probably making money doing it. Good God bless her. I wonder how much they get paid. That's probably Paige probably is the most paid. Of course, because close her name. Yeah. Um, I heard in person it's great, but obviously it's hilarious to comment about. <laughs> it's just funny when says that they went to a slap draw. Like, <laughs> I don't know. That, that's hilarious to me. Yeah, they should just keep going to someone gets slapped. So, what? <laughs> Just keep going until someone gets unconscious. Oh, yeah, slap them unconscious, yeah. Yeah, they, cause they what get- What the hell's a slap draw? Like, <laughs> they get three? No, just oh keep slapping until somebody fucking had yeah. enough, dude, and their face is all red. Yep. Slap draw. Uh, So this is the only fight that I saw over the weekend that's coming up. It's uh, Brandon Moreno versus Albazi. Albazi, they've been waiting for him to go, yeah. Yeah. And then Rose Namajunas is fighting Eric, Aaron Blanchfield, which is going to be Derek tough. Lewis is back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a tough fight night. Our Jack boy Jack Shore. Shore our yeah. boy Jack Shore doing the damn thing. I'll take that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there are some names on here, so it's not it's not terrible. Well, it's on Saturday? Yeah. Uh, at the Apex? Let's take a look. Rogers Place, Edmonton, That's in Canada. Canada. Fight night, Canada. Huh. All right. I'll take it. You get the Dodgers in the World Series, man. Probably going to be watching that. But I'll get to this. Go <laughs> Dodgers. <laughs> They're in New York now. They play tonight. Is that it, brother? That's pretty much it, man. All right, kids. Uh, Drive Fast All Gas launches this freaking Friday. This Friday is your chance to win. Be like our boy, Will, who won the Raptor R Killer from Roush. Uh, be like Will. Uh, we have great merch. Uh, we have a bunch of Carhartt stuff on there. All new merch. All new uh, printer shipping. Zero issues. It is button up. We are good to go. Uh, this is your chance to win over 800 horsepower 2024 Ford Mustang Dark Horse with GTD carbon fiber fenders, carbon fiber hood, spoiler, lip, custom interior from SOS. You have custom GTD wheels, upgraded bare brakes with the big Brembos. This thing is decked out. It will be at SEMA. It's the official car for a Roush and Magnuson at SEMA. So come see me. I will be at SEMA next week, starting Thursday, Friday. Um, come and see it out there. But this thing goes live this freaking Friday. DriveFastAllGas.com. Win this damn thing. This is a shorter one than last time. We're going November 1st to December 15th. I'm trying to deliver this bad boy, announce the winner before Christmas. So you have a brother, a dad, a mom, an uncle. They've always wanted a, a monster car, a dope-ass ride, a hot rod. This is it. This is your chance to give the gift that keeps on giving. This is a one-of-one one Dark Horse Mustang. This thing is so badass. I love it. It has the Roush Launch Edition Supercharged Kit on it. They only made 100 of them. They're sold out. They're never making them again. This has it. has a bunch of other upgrade goodies. This is it, man. So drivefastallgas.com launches this Friday. Good luck, kids. Uh, good luck to the winner. Hope you guys dig it. Thanks for all the support. Love you guys. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, do your thing. Drivefastallgas.com. I'm out.